Hey, chemistry people, let's do some quick free response here. This particular question comes from the 2012 AP Chemistry exam. This is question number six um, and worth nine points. If we take a look here, it says, in a laboratory experiment, lead and an unknown metal Q were immersed in solutions containing aqueous ions of unknown metals Q and X. The following reactions summarize the observations. Boom, observation one, observation two, observation three. On the basis of the reactions indicated above, a range of three metals, P, B, Q, and X, in order from least reactive to most reactive on the lines provided below. Okay, so as we take a quick look at this, uh, in observation number one, we see that lead, in fact, will replace uh, our aqueous metal X ion, uh, and the reaction will uh, proceed. Uh, so this tells me that lead is more active than that X that unknown metal X. As we take a look at reaction number two, uh, we react the metal Q with that same aqueous metal ion X, um, and we recognize that no reaction will occur. So Q is not going to replace uh, that metal ion in solution, and so Q is less reactive than X. And then lastly, if we take a look at the third reaction, where lead is being, react is being reacted with that aqueous ion of unknown metal Q, we find that the reaction does proceed. So uh, we should be able to tell pretty easily here that lead is the most reactive metal because it will replace um, both the uh, aqueous metal ion uh, for X and the aqueous metal ion for Q. And then we should see that Q is the least reactive metal because it won't replace uh, that aqueous ion for the unknown metal X, which means that our unknown metal X must fall somewhere between the reactivity of unknown metal Q and lead. All right, so that was just warming us up for the rest of this question here. As we take a look, it says, uh, the diagram below shows an electrochemical cell that is constructed with a lead electrode immersed in 100 milliliters of 1.0 molar lead nitrate uh, solution and an electrode made of metal X immersed in 100 milliliters of 1.0 molar X nitrate sol uh, aqueous solution. A salt bridge containing a uh, saturated aqueous potassium nitrate connects the anode compartment to the cathode compartment. The electrodes are connected to an external circuit containing a switch, which is open. When a voltmeter is connected to the circuit as shown, the reading on the voltmeter is 0.47 volts. When the switch is closed, electrons flow, flow through the switch from the lead electrode towards the X electrode. Okay, so here's a picture of our uh, voltaic cell, and we're asked to write the equation for the half reaction that occurs at the anode. Well, as we take a quick look here, uh, we are shown, or told rather, that electrons flow from lead towards X. And so if we keep in mind that nifty little um, mnemonic device, fat cat, electrons are flowing from the anode to the cathode. And since we're flowing from lead to X, uh, that implies that, that lead is in fact the anode. And if you remember anox, at the anode oxidation is taking place or the loss of electrons. So if we work to answer this question, the half reaction um, at the anode is gonna be the oxidation half reaction or where lead is losing electrons to form the two plus ion. Boom. All right, then as we continue to speed through this question, um, the next <clears throat> part of this question has two parts to it. It says the value of the standard potential of the cell is 0 0.47 volts. First, we need to determine the standard reduction potential for the half reaction that occurs at the cathode. Uh, and then it says determine the, oxidative, determine the identity of metal X. All right, let's take that one step at a time. Uh, you have to remember that the standard cell potential is determined by taking the uh, reduction potential and adding it to the oxidation potential. Now we're told that the um, standard cell potential for the cell is 0 0.47 volts. And since this question is from 2012, before they changed the AP chemistry test, uh, you'd have to look at a list of reduction potentials. Uh, for the exams moving forward, you'd be given uh, the reduction potentials that you need uh, in the question itself. And so as we take a quick peek at the standard reduction potential list, 
that used to be on our AP Chemistry exam. We're gonna find the reduction potential for lead, the lead two ion, uh, to be negative 0.13. Uh, however, we gotta keep in mind that in this reaction, that is the that, that is the oxidation half reaction. And so even though on this list, uh, we see it as a negative 0.13 voltage. Um, we have to recognize that it's in our reaction going to be a positive 0.13 voltage. So plus positive 0 0.13. Uh, to determine what the uh, reduction potential is, we simply need to do some quick algebra here to subtract the to subtract the oxidation potential from the standard cell potential and we get x is equal to 0 0.34 volts. Okay, part two here of this question then asks us to determine the identity of metal x. Well, if we know that the reduction potential is a positive 0.34 volts, uh, you would just have to go back to your reduction potential list. Oops. and find the species that has a reduction potential of positive 0.34 volts, uh, which we determine here to be copper. So the identity of metal X is copper. And again, this is an old AP chemistry free response question. These are questions that you should still anticipate having to answer. Just be prepared that they are going to pro provide you with the reduction potentials that you need to answer the question within the question itself instead of referencing uh, a giant chart. Okay, so as you think about answering this next part of the question, as it describes what's happened, what happened to the mass of each electrode as the cell operates, um, our anode is here. And again, just remember anox, that's where having oxidation occur. Um, and then we define this as copper, and this is gonna be our cathode. And we're just gonna remember red cat. This is where our uh, reduction half reaction is occurring. And so again, just as you think about what's happening here, if oxidation is occurring, then the solid lead is uh, losing electrons. And so we're gonna go from PB, solid lead, to the lead two ion. And we're gonna lose those two electrons as they sort of float over here. Um, and so we're going to form a bunch of this aqueous lead ion in solution. And so essentially we're going to be losing the mass of our lead electrode here. Um, and then as you think about what's happening over here at the, uh, the copper electrode, because we're gaining electrons, we're going to have the Cu2 plus plus two electrons forming solid copper. So here again, keep in mind, this is our copper two plus ion. And so as it picks up those electrons, they're going to sort of um, pull, be pulled out of solution to form that solid copper. Okay, so our description is essentially going to describe what we just talked about there. The mass of the lead electrode decreases and the mass of the copper electrode increases. And that's all you need. Uh, I know I did all this business up here about, oh, this is the anode, this is the cathode. The College Board does not want to have you write out giant paragraphs about what's going on here, and that can get you into trouble, especially if part of what you say is wrong, even if you know that the mass of the lead electrode decreases, the mass of the copper electrode increases. Uh, so just stick to answering the question as succinctly as possible. Um, one sentence, two sentence uh, explanations are really good, especially if it's not a calculation with to show your work. So just keep it short to the point, answer the question. Okay, so the last part of this question is a pretty typical College Board free response type of question uh, where they're then going to ask you to think about what is going to happen in the event that something changes with your experimental setup. And so as you look at our uh, questions here and as you think about your uh, voltaic cell, 
Uh, first, it says a student bumps the cell setup, resulting in the salt bridge losing contact with the solution in the cathode compartment. Is uh, voltage equal to 0 0.47 or is voltage equal to zero? Justify your choice. Okay, so as I think about answering this um, then, first we're just going to say what our answer is. We're gonna say voltage equals zero. And then we're going to justify that response. So the transfer, when we no longer have that salt bridge in place, the transfer of ions will stop a charge imbalance. will prevent electrons from flowing through the wire. Okay, so to take a look at part two of this uh, part of the question then, it says a student spills a small amount of 0.5 molar sodium sulfate into the compartment with the lead electrode, resulting in the formation of a precipitate. Is voltage less than 0 0.47 or is voltage greater than 0 0.47? justify your choice. Okay, so I'm just take a quick peek back at my voltaic cell here to remind myself that the redox reaction here is going to include the oxidation of the lead, solid lead, and the reduction of the copper ions. And so I'm gonna get a, uh, a redox reaction that looks something like this. Now, the reason why I'm gonna do that here is because I can set up uh, my reaction quotient which relates the concentration of the products to the concentration of the reactants. Again, keep in mind, the reaction quotient is only gonna express the concentration of the aqueous things, products over reactants. And then we need to recognize that the sodium sulfate is gonna cause some of the lead ion to precipitate out as lead to sulfate. In other words, we're not gonna have as much of this lead ion in solution or the concentration of that lead ion is going to decrease. And so if you think about that then, our numerator or the concentration of our products is going to decrease due to the fact that some of it has precipitated out. But the concentration of our reactants is going to stay the same. First, answer it. We're going to say voltage is greater than 0.47 and then we need to come up with our justification. The concentration of the lead to ion will decrease, resulting in a thermodynamically favorable oxidation half reaction. Okay, and then lastly here it says, after the laboratory session is over, a student leaves the switch closed. The next day a student opens the switch and reads the voltmeter. Is voltage less than 0 0.47 or is voltage equal to 0 0.47? Justify your choice. And then similar here to part two, we need to think about, okay, if this reaction is continuing to proceed in this direction, then the concentration of our products is going to increase and the concentration of reactants as they get used up, as the reaction proceeds, is going to decrease. And so we're gonna get a reaction quotient where our numerator now is much larger than our denominator. And so the first thing you wanna do is just answer the question. So here, uh, our voltage is equal to zero, and then your justification and increase in lead ion concentration and a decrease in copper ion concentration results in less thermodynamically favorable conditions.